Hi, I'm Cam Wright. Uh, I'm a thoracic surgeon. I work in Boston and uh, I lead the uh, General Thoracic uh, Surgery Database. And I'm here with my colleagues uh, David Jones from uh, Virginia and Mark Allen uh, from the Mayo Clinic uh, to talk today about the benefits uh, and rewards of participating in the General Thoracic Database. Um, let me just first by saying that we started in 2002. It's now 2013, uh, 11 years under our belt. We've grown from a very, very small uh, enterprise, and now we have about 230 sites and uh, about 800 uh, plus uh, surgeons participating in the database. We provide uh, risk-adjusted uh, results back to our uh, members every six months, and uh, I think uh, a lot of people recognize the value of the database now. I think I'd like to ask uh, Mark, my colleague, uh, how he's used it in uh, his institution and uh, uh, the value he finds in it. Mark? Thanks, Cam. Well, we participated in the General Thoracic Surgery Database because uh, it's an excellent way to get feedback on how your practice is doing compared to the rest of the country. So every six months we turn in our data, we upload it to the Duke Data Center, and then it's analyzed and sent back to us, and then we can compare how we're doing with our colleagues. And since nobody's perfect, we can always find something to improve on, and it gives us a spot to focus in on. For example, if we have too much blood usage or we have too long of air leaks, we can look at that, analyze our practice, and see if we can make it better. That's great, uh, Mark. I appreciate those, uh, those comments. And uh, David, uh, have you had any problems uh, uh, or have you heard of problems of uh, why people don't participate in? Were there any... Uh, uh, hoops that you had to jump uh, through to join the database or, or to properly enter the data or have you heard from other people about problems they've had that uh, problems they've overcome and, and solved? Yes, Cam. Uh, you know, we're fortunate in Virginia, the, uh, our hospital uh, funds the cost of the uh, database and as, as well as a, a data uh, extraction coordinator. Um, when we first wanted to open up the thoracic uh, aspect of the STS database, you know, I made the presentation to the hospital administration that we would be using this for a quality and process improvement tool, as well as uh, an opportunity for us, again, to benchmark our own practice against that of uh, our colleagues around uh, the country. And so that, I think, was a powerful argument, particularly as it related to quality and process improvement uh, initiatives that we would take with the uh, database. The second issue, and perhaps the more expensive issue, is finding a, uh, a data extraction uh, individual to help. We have a, a nurse who works uh, with our service and uh, is really integrated into the team and provides slides, gives us uh, feedback monthly on our performance uh, in addition to what's generated from uh, the six-month uh, semi-annual report. So, I think probably the largest uh, uh, barrier, if you will, is cost, but I've found, and in talking with colleagues around the country, if the presentation can be made and it's based on uh, a patient-centric request for support and resources for the database, that the hospitals, in large part, have been very receptive to that. Well, thanks, uh, David. Uh, there's certainly other reasons to participate in the, in the database. Uh, you can certainly query your data manager and have him or her run a report for you very quickly and know what kind of cases you've done and the complications that, that have occurred. We actually use our database uh, and, and ask her to, if you will, uh, check with our residents and, and we have a dual M&M report where we look at what the residents report and then what our data manager reports and we actually pick up additional complications that we need to discuss and adjudicate in our M&M session. We have to remember that uh, uh, CMS has approved uh, the STS databases for PQRI and we're in the process of working uh, through that and everyone re realizes that the STS leads uh, the world in terms of clinical databases that they're much superior than uh, administrative databases and, and we have to continue to lead the way in, in quality and, and in safety. And I will say that we're going to follow the lead of our uh, partners with uh, adult cardiac surgery. And we're working on a lung cancer uh, quality of care metric where we will uh, be able to compare uh, all the STS participants and, and uh, be able to adjudicate and report in a publicly reported fashion in the years to come 
just like the adult cardiac database now, now does for uh, cabbage care. And uh, it's important that we're transparent with the public, and it's important that we develop the metrics and not uh, uh, other people who use uh, inferior quality administrative data. Mark, uh, 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 what about what would you say to your peers who are currently not using the database? As a member of the board, can you comment on, on what the American Board of Thoracic Surgery has recently announced in terms of participation of uh, maintenance of certification part four? All right, so part of recertification involves participation in a database to improve your practice, sort of a quality improvement. And uh, one of the requirements then is participated in a nationally recognized da database of which the SDS is the most easy to join and the most prominent. And that then allows you to get information about your practice, get some feedback, compare yourself how you're doing with the rest of the country and make improvements so the outcomes and the quality for your patients are better. And it's now a requirement, or soon will be a requirement, to uh, continue your board certification to participate in the maintenance of certification. So it's a, it's a, it's a good idea to join it. Uh, it crosses out part four of maintenance of certification. It's already set up and done for you. You just have to participate, and uh, it takes care of itself. And I'd like to close with, uh, there is a research part, uh, component of the database. Uh, and you are free to query the database and write a research question and have the Duke uh, Clinical Research uh, uh, Institute help you with that. David, can you just speak uh, from a research perspective about what uh, the, the implications, what, what the reports, what the papers have, have, have uh, indicated in terms of using the data from the database? Yes, we, we, uh, we've used the, the SCS database as have a number of other institutions uh, really as a research engine. Uh, we've, we've posed the, the, the question and uh, uh, by having the STS database with so many procedures that are, that are currently there, you can really ask some st questions and get uh, statistically appropriate answers that would be very difficult from single institution or even multi-institution studies to try to answer. And these questions can be centered uh, on, um, you know, whatever type of operation or procedure uh, that you're interested in. So I think it's a wonderful area and, and very fertile for additional uh, research questions to be asked. And I anticipate as more and more patients uh, are enrolled in uh, uh, the GTS uh, uh, database, uh, more centers uh, get up and going, that uh, we'll be able, even able to further risk adjust and, and address some of the other research questions that are out there. Thanks, David. I'd like to thank all of you for uh, uh, listening to us today and uh, uh, discovering uh, the importance uh, and the implications of participating in our very important general thoracic surgery database. I appreciate your time.